Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Mark. You didn't drag poor Marcus along, did you? Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about the Rock Island All Gen 12 gauge shotgun. And realistically, this is kind of an area that is a bit of a gap for me. Um, I'm not very strong in shotguns. I know a little bit, uh, maybe enough to get me in trouble, but realistically, this is an area that I would like to uh, explore, get a little bit more knowledgeable in, maybe take some classes, uh, get some training in as well, and then also kind of give you guys my opinions about some of the different shotguns that I am uh, currently looking at. So far, I have four shotguns uh, in my collection. I'm hoping to add a fifth one here pretty soon, uh, but uh, this is probably the cheapest of the lot. And for a lot of you, this actually may end up being a viable option for you if you're looking for an inexpensive shotgun to just get you in for something cheap to have for home defense or something inexpensive for hunting, or maybe you just need something to toss in the truck and call it good. Whatever the case may be, this may be an option. We'll talk about that here in just a second, but I gotta dish it over to you guys and ask you, what are you looking for when it comes to reviews on shotguns? Sound off in the comment section down below because I wanna make sure that I gear a lot of my videos in the future specifically for the areas that you guys are looking at. In addition to that, if you guys are interested, I, I would really appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Uh, I've got a lot of different things going on, not only here on YouTube, but also on Instagram. You guys can follow me there. And on top of all of that, I am doing a weekly newsletter that uh, does things like find really great uh, deals on ammo, uh, some great deals on things like this type of shotgun and other type of firearms accessories and gear. I also do a um, giveaway each and every single month, so I'd encourage you guys to sign up for that and uh, jump in on the giveaway at the very least. All right, so let's get into the specifics on this particular shotgun. I found this on Palmetto State Armory's website for like 230 bucks, and I, I just couldn't pass it up. A very inexpensive uh, shotgun, and uh, I thought that this would be great for you guys to uh, take a look at and just maybe get your thoughts at the very least on shotguns in general. This is, like I said, uh, imported by Rock Island Armory and uh, it is actually made by a company called Darye in Turkey. So uh, basically what Rock Island has done is subcontracted uh, the manufacturing of this shotgun to that company in Turkey slap their name on it right here on the receiver and then import it into the United States under Rock Island's name. And there you have it, really inexpensive shotgun. This is going to be a five plus one shell capacity for two and three quarter or three inch shells. It's going to have a 18 and a half inch ribbed barrel that is going to have uh, adjustable or different chokes. You're able to swap out the different types of chokes in here as well. And that's something I really did like from Rock Island. Straight from the manufacturer, you get this small little box that has two additional chokes. So all together you have three different types of chokes. That's going to be cylinder, modified, and full. So at the very least you have a starting point in trying to get this shotgun to pattern the best way you want it to for the different types of shells that you might be shooting. So that's something I really did like. In addition to it, it has these really kind of uh, Magpul style uh, furniture set on here, which gives it a kind of a nice look. And it has a, a, a cheek riser here for you to set up your specific cheek well on the buttstock. Now, the biggest downside to this particular setup is the receiver is not tapped for you to add a pick section for a red dot. So uh, to be frankly honest with you, this cheek riser is pretty unneeded, you know, because I'm going to keep it as low as possible so that when I pull up on the shotgun, I'm gonna come 
way down low so that I can follow the ribbing on the top of the receiver and the barrel to find that brass bead at the end of the barrel. So that's just how I do it when I'm out hunting and um, have been fairly successful with it. This is going to have a standard crossbar safety on the trigger guard and it's going to be in a pretty decent spot for us right-handers. Uh, if you're left-handed, probably not going to be uh, the most convenient for you. That's one of the reasons why I like the Mossberg style Tang safety. Uh, that ends up being pretty ambidextrous for most people. Operation on this is going to be pretty standard for a pump shotgun. You're going to have your release lever here so you can uh, actuate the forend and uh, be able to check your chamber to make sure that it is clear or to unload it or whatever the case may be. Again, this is going to be a five plus one capacity and that's actually something I really did like having that much capacity on a fairly small shotgun coming in right around that uh, 36 inch mark. So not too bad, it's not unwieldy, it's not extremely, it doesn't have an extremely long barrel. So it feels like I can get really in behind this shotgun and it's not like I'm waving this big magic wand in front of me or something like that. So uh, there you have it there. All right, so let's talk about some of the things that I didn't particularly like about this shotgun. While this buttstock has a really nice rubberized butt plate on here to absorb some of the recoil. This shotgun is fairly light. It's coming in, I would say, probably around that six and a half, seven pound mark. Uh, I didn't check that for you guys, but if you're interested, you can just check out Rock Island's uh, webpage and uh, you should be able to get all of that information. But realistically, this is really light in comparison to my Mossberg 590A1, or even my Remington 870. Rock Island Armory, all gen, 12 gauge pump. That's got a kick to it. Even though it's 12 gauge, I've got uh, other 12 gauges light recoiling, but uh, first shells through it, whew, that's got a kick to it. Uh, let's put some more through. That light weight is going to translate into a lot of felt recoil. So individuals who are small of stature, maybe new to shooting, may not find the shooting experience of this shotgun to be very comfortable. Now, that's just something that you may have to get used to, and most people uh, can get used to it, but at the end of the day, my shoulder was pretty sore, and uh, it was bruised up a little bit. Again, just need to get it out to the range a little bit more and get used to it. The next thing I didn't particularly care for is the forend here. Um, you have this lip at the end of the forend, and my natural point of grabbing this forend is just like this. So there is a bit of a gap in between my index finger and this lip. So every time that I pull up and I pull the trigger on this, that lip is going to bash my finger every single time. Again, making the uh, shooting experience just that much more uncomfortable. Not that it's the end of the world. If I wanted to, I could either train myself to make sure that I got all the way up against that lip each and every single time, or I just take a Dremel and cut that piece off, sand it down, make it nice and smooth, and um, don't have to worry about it anymore. At the end of the day, uh, with this being so inexpensive, a lot of the gaps could be taken care of by just doing some your own modifications to it or uh, taking it to a gunsmith to have them work on it a little bit. Uh, one of the things that I would highly recommend is getting your receiver tapped so that you could add a pick section or just have a pick section added onto this so you can run a red dot. Um, that comes in extremely handy for uh, turkey hunting or even for home defense. So that's something that I would probably recommend right off the bat. Again, since it's so inexpensive, adding that gunsmithing cost to this is still going to put this in the budget realm as well. 
So the shooting experience of this uh, turned out to be just fine. It ran reliably. I ran 50 shells of two and three quarter bird shot. Uh, that was seven and a half shot um, bird shot and it ran just fine. Uh, I then switched over to three inch Fiocchi double lot buck and it ran that just fine as well. Obviously I felt a little bit more recoil with the double lot buck than I did with the bird shot, but at the end of the day, uh, it ran all 75 shells just fine, had no issues, and uh, it, it, it it's going to do what you need it to do. One of the small complaints that I saw online, and I did notice it myself, was the fact that uh, when I received this at my FFL, this was actually fairly dirty. So when you guys get it home, if you decide to pick one of these up, I would highly recommend you go ahead and break it all down and do a deep cleaning inside and out. If you guys are interested in learning how to do that, I'd be more than happy to do a separate video on how to clean uh, this type of shotgun and um, just sound off in the comment section if you guys are interested in seeing that. With it being said, um, would I buy this? Would I recommend it to somebody who is looking for an inexpensive shotgun? Yeah, I would. Uh, I would preface that with uh, a lot of cautionary tales of, hey, it's pretty light, so you're going to feel a lot of recoil. Uh, you might need to look at the forend to see if it's going to bother your uh, hand while you're shooting, uh, so on and so forth. So with all of those different factors added in, I still would say that this would be a great inexpensive shotgun for a lot of people out there. But I put it out to you guys. Would you guys think, would you pick up something like this for under $250? Sound off in the comment section down below. With that being said, we're pretty much going to wrap this one up. I sure do Appreciate you guys staying until the end. Again, if you guys are interested in signing up for the Fit and Fire newsletter, uh, I'll have a link to that in the pinned comment for you guys to swing on by and sign up for it. I'd encourage you guys to do that. At the very least, don't miss out on the giveaways. If you are already signed up for the newsletter, make sure you're checking your junk mail. Sometimes it goes into the junk mail, so just identify it that it's not junk and you'll see it each and every single week. So that being said, I again appreciate you guys' the support. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. I would appreciate it. We'll go ahead and get out of here. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.